Good morning. It's a bright, sunshiny day today. Let's see if I keep the glow off today. Put my shiny halo on here. <laughs> Just kosher glad you're on here today. All right, well, it's a sad day. Yeah, it's a sad day. Today I caught up with my wife on uh, birthdays, so now I can't tease her anymore. I'm just as old as she is, so, and uh, old and decrepit and falling apart. So <clears throat> you ask what I'm doing on my birthday today. Uh, a funeral, you believe that? Yes, uh, it's a graveside service this afternoon at one o'clock. So if you think about it, I ask that you uh, pray for pray for the Moya family and uh, pray for me. I'll just say the right words. And uh, God's word is obviously what's going to help people. And that's what I want to share with them today. So, so uh, I would ask that you pray. Uh, uh, for all of that today. That's at one o'clock today. So <clears throat> glad to see you on here though. And we'll, uh, I don't know how long this one will be. Sometimes they're shorter than others, but thanks also for so many of you that have uh, wished me a happy birthday already. Um, it's a, it's a good day and we are uh, having a nice dinner tonight, so I'm going to have ribeye steaks, and uh, Teresa is making uh, banana pudding and uh, homemade apple crisp, so it's going to be a good day, so maybe this afternoon, as nice as it is after I get done with the funeral, uh, maybe I'll sneak out to Jackson and go fishing uh, for a couple hours too, so if I was to catch a fish, that would just be uh, icing on the cake, wouldn't it? So, but um, anyway, it uh, is a good day and hope everyone else has a good day. It's supposed to be 70 degrees, sunny today, beautiful day right now. So we uh, will enjoy this and, and uh, take advantage of this. So, <clears throat> but I, I was, um, yeah, I, 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 um, was talking to a law enforcement officer yesterday and uh ooh yes you do need to make cinnamon rolls Faye that would be a good idea so <laughs> uh, uh, uh th there see you make me lose track I get to thinking about cinnamon rolls and then I get all lost but yeah um you know I was thinking I was speaking to a, a law enforcement officer yesterday and he said, still, still today, they are uh, getting uh, calls. He told me daily from kids like, I don't know, 12 years old to 18 years old that are contemplating suicide. Some, some tried, some haven't, but they're definitely calling about it. And, uh, you know, our society is just a, a wreck and we have the answer and we need to tell them that. And, uh, not be ashamed of it. I mean, let's not be ashamed of what God has done for us. And, and, uh, let, let's tell people about Christ because he is the answer. And, um, it seems we can get so caught up in our own world and our own lives that we forget to reach out to others. And, and let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's reach out to, to those around us, check in on each other and, uh, uh, you know, just watch your children, you know what, if you got some kids, you, you spend some time with your kids and talk to them and get them to talk to you too. So, but first thing that I saw, and I'm reminded of that because we're in such a sin sick world. And this is what God said in Proverbs 8 and verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to hate pride, to hate arrogancy, to hate the evil way, and to hate the froward mouth, do I hate? Uh, I mean, all of those things, and and uh, we should, and and uh, <clears throat> that that is the fear of the Lord. We we need to hate those things, and it's not that we hate the people, but but we hate what they're doing, and and we hate the 
what it represents. And so hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil way, the froward mouth. And, and you, you know, we need to understand that, yeah, we're in a, a sinful world, but it doesn't mean that we have to uh, act that way. And, and we don't have to <clears throat> allow it to affect our attitudes, but let, let's be different than, than, uh, <clears throat> than the rest of them. And, and then I, I read this in my devotions too, over in, in, uh, Luke chapter 23. And what a, what a thought in Luke 23 and verse 13. Whoops. I think I, I, I wrote it down wrong. Great. I have to go back and look. I, I, I lost the verse. So I've, I've definitely written it down wrong. It was in Spurgeon's uh, devotion, <clears throat> but uh, he, he had made the, the the statement about if he does this to the green tree, what will he do to the dry one? And, and uh, I should have looked it up um, <clears throat> my own Bible. But anyway, uh, and, and it was a solemn warning uh, about if <laughs> Faye, was that you? Did you walk across the street and ring the doorbell? I'm, I'm not sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> we do have quite the guard dogs, so I. I Uh, oh, 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 this is a good visit. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, uh, uh, it's some, oh, Luke 23, 31. See, see, I knew if I waited long enough, <clears throat> one of you guys would, would, uh, find this for me. I, I know somebody, Hey, this was a good, good interruption. Somebody just brought me goodies. I'm not sure what they brought me. But we love goodies. So, <clears throat> yes, for if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And, <clears throat> and uh, Spurgeon used that to remind us of the, the, the judgment of our works as believers. Now, if he's going to do that to the judgment of believers and, and uh, their works, then how worse is it going to be for the unbeliever? And, and uh uh, it, it is, and and you know we we look in that that uh, Proverbs eight how we need to hate those things, and and we do, and and I don't I don't know how to do this very well to separate the evil from the evil doer, you know, from the person, and but but those people need the Lord because there's a day coming when when their the judgment is is going to be real for them, and. It's going to be eternal, and and how we need to, we just need to keep standing in the midst of a of a wicked world, and, and it is a wicked world, and and but it, it still tells us that you know we need to stand like Christ did, and and then I read this verse in Psalm twenty three in verse four. We all know it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. And, and, uh, you know, I, I will fear no evil. And we're, we're in the midst of a, uh, definitely of a evil time and, and evil government. And I don't know if you saw it or not in Canada, that pastor that had gotten arrested because he wouldn't obey the, the COVID re regulations. And so they threw him in jail. He was in jail, I think for 35 days and they let him out he went right back to having church again. I mean, they've been having church uh, for quite some time. And, and uh, so now they go in and uh, they have put up a fence around the church and they're guard, guarding it with the, the Mounties and, and uh, not allowing them to, to go in there to have church. And they're saying that it's over COVID regulations. This, this has absolutely, you guys do realize this is nothing about covid and none of this is about COVID anymore. This this is about this is about control and complying. And uh, <clears throat> there there look there is no way that some some cheap piece of cloth is going to protect you from from this 
uh, virus that's out there. It's just not going to happen. And, you know, people have gone from trusting this crazy little cloth mask to a vaccine and thinking now, oh, now we're safe. Oh, you, you know what? You you can, you're probably, I, I'd almost say you're probably more likely to die of rabies than you are the, the COVID or whatever. But I don't know. I'm probably misspeaking on that. But anyway, it's ridiculous how we we have become so fearful of you know, and we're fearful of this tyrant government, and and we're we're afraid of these things. But <clears throat> there's no reason to be afraid. We just need to stand and and just keep telling people about Christ. You, you see, and, and we look at the people and we think how evil they are, and and they are. They're following a, an evil teaching, and 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 they're scared, and and they're you know, and they. And then there's those that are gluttons for power and they want more and more power and all of that. And, and they're, look, they're, they're following the devices of the prince of the power of the air. And, and, and here we, we need to, to see that Satan is doing everything he can to keep our country blinded. And, uh, and he's doing that right now by keeping people fearful. Well, don't be fearful and, and don't be blinded by, what Satan's doing, and, and just keep telling people about Christ. People are searching. I, I mean, we, we have the greatest opportunity uh, in, in this generation to, to tell people about Christ and, and let them know that God's got this under control, and, and we can trust him and live, with, live for him, and, <clears throat> and he's got all this under control. And, and never forget that. I mean, God, God has it all under control. And so, and you're right, Joel, Maria, if all the churches followed suit, they'd run out of fences and mounties. You're exactly right. If, if the American people would just say, we're not doing it anymore <clears throat> and stand up and do what's right and, and live your life and <clears throat> tell people about Jesus and quit hiding under your couch. So, you know, just get out there and be what God wants you to be. And then <clears throat> I read, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, in Psalm 78, and I, I read part of this in, in verses 46 through 58. Here, I, I read this too, and God just reminds me of, of how powerful he is. I, I mean, you, you read in there what he did to the Egyptians to get to, to, to deliver Israel. And uh, look, God's going to use us. God will protect us. And okay, so what if the day comes when you lose your life for, uh, for him? Then let's celebrate like the disciples did that we were persecuted for Christ's sake. And what do they, what do they do? Like, you know, it's that saying, do they threaten us with heaven? I mean, what, how, how, how bad is it? You know, if you die here, you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. So, nothing to be afraid of. Let's just keep telling people the truth. And, and there's, don't, don't get so focused on the bad that you stop seeing the good. And we're seeing a lot of good things going on right now all over the country. And Satan's trying to keep that hidden from us, but uh, he can hide all he wants, but we know uh, how, how good it is. And we know that, that God's got this under control. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the pep talk for the day. And then have a couple of things, other other things in Luke here in a moment. But then I read this in Luke, in Proverbs 12, verse 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. You know, I, I was talking to Nelson yesterday about this. And that the our government wants to redistribute wealth. You, you know what's going to happen? They can do this. They, they can redistribute the wealth. And those that were wealthy will end up being wealthy again. And those that were poor will end up being poor again because it's just the way it is. And I'm not saying everybody is poor because uh, of this case, but most people in this country are poor and they're broke because they choose to be. They're, they're, either, they're either lazy or they have uh, got caught up in some kind of an addiction. And so that addiction robs them of everything that they have. Uh, but majority of people are poor today, poor because they choose to be. And the thing is, is the government can give them all the money that they think that they can handle 
and they'll end up losing it, and, and the rich will have it again, and, uh, and the diligent will have it again. The hard workers will have it again. God always uh, blesses that, and so, and, and it is socialism, Faye, and, and they want to do that, but it just doesn't work. It, it does not work. All it does is make a bunch of people lazy and, 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 and not caring, and, and, and I think our country's coming to that. I mean, you can go into, you, you go into stores these days and, 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 and uh, uh, just there, there's, doesn't seem to be much customer service in so many of them. You, you know, you just have a, people have an, I don't care attitude about things. And, and, uh, and, and I think some of it obviously is, is the, not just a mentality, but I, I think it's the atmosphere of the day. And I think some people are just, you know, downtrodden, you know, and they're, and, and, and uh, just, you know, really beaten down. And so we just, hey, you know what? Satan is on the war path, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so let's go out and and with Christ's help and, and walking with him and being honoring to him, then he walks with us and we make an impact uh, in this world, even in the midst of the devil's world, we make an impact. And so let's let's understand that. So then I was reading, and, and this one's a little more difficult. I need to study it out some more. But but uh, uh, in in uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse 41, it says, Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And, and he said, So are you speaking this parable to us, or are you speaking this to all of us, and and uh, and the Lord said, "Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. <clears throat> of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And now, <clears throat> here's the part I need to study out. I'm, I'm struggling with this and, and, I, and I, I guess I've never studied this out. But so... He's talking about stewards and, and he's talking about servants that, and Peter said, who, who are you talking uh, about in this? And and, he, and he'd already talked about this earlier too, about seeking the kingdom of God and, and he's going to add to you all the things that you need. And, and he said, the thing is, is you just need to be ready for the son of man because he's going to come at an hour you don't think it is when he's going to come, Okay. And so Peter then says, so are you, who are you talking to in this? And then he talks about this servant and he's talking about the one that is a servant, but he doesn't look for the savior. He's not prepared for him. And so it seems to me that he's not talking about an unbeliever because he separates this servant from an unbeliever by saying that he's going to give him his portion with the unbelievers. It's almost like he's, his punishment is going to be very severe. Now, like I said, I need to say this out some more. Maybe this man was unsaved, okay? And and his portion is going to be hell, all right? Maybe that's the part. But if he is a believer, but he, his portion is going to be with the unbelievers, it's going to be a severe, severe, severe punishment that God's going to give him. And because of his works, because of what he's doing. I mean, he's not going to be able to give anything to Christ at the judgment seat, because he's not living for God at all. It says, and that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So here's the punishment, right? But he that knew not and did commit worthy of stripes shall be bit, beaten with few stripes. The one that does this out of ignorance isn't going to get as many stripes as the one who does this out of presumption. And, and so it, it's almost like the believer that knows what he needs to do, but chooses not to do it and chooses to live in disobedience. Look, God isn't pleased with that. And, and we all know that 
we, we all do, we all make some bad choices in our lives, but the, the smart one it, it, and, and the righteous one is the one that is going to repent. He's going to confess. He's going to move on. He's going to get away from whatever it was that he was doing. The one that is presumptuous and continues as a believer to live in sin and do what he or she wants to do rather than what they he or she knows that they ought to do, you are being presumptuous and and God is not pleased with that. And let us make sure, even David wrote in Psalms, Lord, keep me from presumptuous sins. You, you want to tick God off, then you live in sin and, and knowing, knowing what's right, then you're, you're in trouble, okay? And you need to get things right with him quickly. And because why? For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So, uh, you know, a lot of times if someone acts like an unsaved person, walks like an unsaved person, talks like an unsaved person, then they're an unsaved person. So... <laughs> <laughs> there are those that that are 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 unsaved, okay? Those need to trust Christ as their savior. I do believe that there are some carnal believers out there though that you're walking around doing what you want to do, doing everything that that you know is not right and you're still doing it anyway. You're you're treading on thin ice and God's not happy with that. And and it reminds me. This reminds me be the real deal. And, and yeah, be transparent. And, and we do things that we shouldn't do. And, and, you know, I thought of something that, you know, I think I made a mistake yesterday. And, and uh, I, I, anyway, and, and not, not, I, I don't believe it's a sin. I just think I made a mistake. And, and I'm thankful that God forgives of those things and helps us. And, and, and we'll get, you know, we're going to get it straightened out. And so, but, here, we just, if you're walking in presumptuous sin, you're in trouble, okay? That's all I'm saying. And then look at verse 49. And Jesus said, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how I am straightened till it be accomplished. Now he's talking about going to the cross, all right? Die on the cross. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. And, and he does, you know, I mean, Jesus came, Jesus, he, he doesn't say there he came to judge. Jesus didn't come to judge. Jesus came to save. That's what he tells us. John three seventeen. He didn't come to judge the world. He came to save the world. And so thankful for that. Thankful that Jesus came to save us. But the, the gospel and Jesus himself, I, I mean, they bring division. They do, and, and it brings controversy because what God's word, the Holy Spirit's conviction, Jesus Christ on that cross and death, burial, and resurrection, it brings you to a point where you need to make a choice and you need to either trust Christ or reject him. And when those who choose to reject him come against those that have chosen to uh, accept him and to trust him, causes a great division. And and the sad thing is, is when the rapture takes place, it really causes a division. Because then it says that the father will be left behind, the son will be taken. The the daughter will be left behind, the mother will be taken. And and, and there's gonna be a great division. And that's why that's why we're here. That's why we wake up every morning. God has someone for us to reach out to share the gospel, encourage another believer, and, and walk for him and just be what it is that he wants us to be. People are needing Jesus, and it's our responsibility to share that with them. And, and then help them grow. Help them be what they need to be. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do our best to do so. So anyway, here it is. It's our day. We are uh, looking at squirrels outside. Dogs are chasing squirrels. People are bringing me food and goodies and uh you know what it's just a good day and uh 
You guys have a great day today. And if you think about one o'clock, pray for that funeral. I would appreciate that. And uh, uh, God bless you guys. Have a great day.